The CBOE volatility index is hitting a multi-year low this week, but why? Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Dominic Chu. Pravit Chintawan Vanich is with Macro Risk Advisors, Rich Ross, Evercore ISI. Pravit, we're going to start with you because you are the VIX guy. You know a lot about this index. First of all, take us through what it says or what it means when we say the VIX hits this near decade low and what does it say about the overall markets? Well, the VIX hitting multi, uh, the VIX hitting lows since 2007 really just tells us that things are quiet out there, right? You know, if we look at the actual volatility in the S&P, that we can see that, you know, one month actual volatility is something like seven, you know, six months is something like 10. I mean, these are very low numbers and the markets have been very quiet for a very long time. So if anything, the low VIX is really just telling us that things are quiet and people are not really willing to pay a lot for short dated protection. So let me get this right. You're saying that, I mean, we kind of get this sense. We've, we've spoken about trading on Trading Nation about this often. This idea that the, the volatility is non-existent in the market. We haven't really seen a 1% rise or fall in any of the indices for quite some time here and only a handful of times year to date. Realized volatility, what's actually happened in the stock market is actually lower than even what the VIX is indicating. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. And, you know, when actual volatility ends up being lower than the VIX, what happens is that people who own options lose money. So in other words, if you buy an option and nothing happens and volatility ends up lower than you know, what was implied by the VIX, you end up losing money. And this is over time, it ends up being a very costly, a very costly trade to own volatility. And that's, I guess that's what people don't see when they look at the VIX you know, approaching 10. It looks very tempting, like, oh, hey, I want to go out and buy that. It's at you know, multi-decade lows. Um, the problem is that in actuality, when you go out and try to own volatility, you run into this, what we call decay cost, this, this phenomenon where the market ends up being even less volatile than what was, what was expected from the VIX. All right. So, so we know volatility is low. We know that the charts are showing the same thing, Rich. You look at the same charts I do, but you know a lot more about them. So what exactly about the volatility picture has caught your attention? And can we expect to see this low volatility regime continue into the summer months? Well, I'll tell you, Dom, to Pravid's point, you know, from my standpoint, the VIX in isolation is not to be used as a predictive tool, that, that the absolute level of the VIX is not sort of this ominous harbinger of, of doom to come or a sign of complacency. I think, once again, as Pravid alluded to, it's just sort of a sign of the times. It's, it's the mirror image of a very strong trending bull market, which, in my view, has further to run. But to your point, Dom, I do expect a pickup in volatility as we move into the summer. I don't see it in May, the proverbial sell in May, but I think as we move through June and prices move to exhaustion on the upside, the VIX is likely to move towards some short-term exhaustion on the downside. And you know, when you look at a real long-term chart of the VIX, I think it's interesting. And this speaks to the idea that this is not necessarily the proverbial bell that rings at the top of the equity markets. Look at 1993, we pushed to a a new low on the VIX, and that was really the beginning of a strong bull market. And even in 2005, where we also dipped below that somewhat magical 10 level, you still had two, two and a half years before the financial crisis really started to unwind in earnest. So it was not a short-term tell by any stretch. But the last point I'll leave you with is that just looking optically at that very long-term chart, to expect a sort of new era of, of structurally low VIX levels below 10 is probably not a strong play either. My point is to suggest only that staring at the VIX in isolation should not be a reason to sell the market or not to enjoy a strong trend in equities globally. Profit, I want to go back to you for, for, for one more point here because Rich brings up an interesting point. A lot of professionals do not just look at the VIX in terms of a timing mechanism. They look at it as a piece of data within the entire realm of market data that's out there. In your mind, as you watch some of these indicators, especially the volatility index, are there misconceptions that you see playing out either in the news or in the media or, or investors in general? What are we getting wrong about the VIX or why are we looking at it so closely and are we looking at it the right way? Well, I think there's this natural human tendency to expect things to mean revert almost instantly. In other words, we look at the VIX at 10 and, you know, we look back at the last time the VIX was at 10, we see 2007 and, you know, everyone likes to say like, oh, like, you know, stability brings about instability or, you know what I'm saying, right? People. 
people like to look, look at the previous time something happened and then instantly infer that the same exact thing is going to happen, when in reality things are a little bit more complicated than that. Um, you know, but one indicator I've been looking at is longer dated volatility. So don't just look at the VIX, which measures one month volatility, look further out. So what I've been looking at is VIX features, which are actually um, essentially a way of trading longer dated volatility. And even those have reached very low levels, which I think is interesting. I, I think it's easy to say that, okay, the past month has been pretty quiet, so I expect the next month to be quiet. And historically, that's that's been a good prediction to make. But it's a, it's a lot harder to say that the past six months have been quiet or the past year has been quiet. Therefore, I expect the next year to be quiet. You know, our ability to see the future or infer things about the future um, from the past gets I guess less and less when you take a longer time frame. All right, so I guess you have to look at not just those near dated futures and the near dated curve, but also other ways in longer term and longer term contracts for the VIX overall. Pravit Chintawanvanich, thank you so much for joining us. Also, thank Rich you. Ross as well. Take a look at the charts there. And thank you for joining Trading Nation. I'm Dominic Chu. If you missed anything here or want to see past episodes, go to tradingnation.cnbc.com. Until the next time around, we'll see you. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.